I met Jack about uh, over 12 years ago or so. Mm -hmm. I was a flight nurse for another company and I was in Albuquerque and Jack had just been diagnosed with spinal cancer and we were taking him out emergently out to uh, Boston, Massachusetts. I, re I remember very clearly we, we were living in Albuquerque and life was good until all of a sudden I came down with spinal cancer and I needed to get to uh, Boston, Massachusetts to Mass General Hospital quickly. I was in a lot of trouble so I met Denise the first time in a air ambulance flight at 41,000 feet and in a lot of pain and she took great care of me but the one thing she did say was that uh, someday I'm going to start my own company and I said Denise that sounds great I'll write you a big check. I delivered him to the hospital and I had bonded with the family his wife was absolutely wonderful he was wonderful it was one of those connections that you knew that you're going to have the rest of your life I didn't know how that was going to happen because typically you drop off a patient and you never see them again. Between surgery and radiation and I hadn't uh, smelled fresh air in six months so I was out just wanting to get home. Got a call that we were going to pick up a patient from Massachusetts General and uh, they told me his name and I was thrilled to death because I knew it was Jack. You know I didn't think I'd ever see her again until all of a sudden I see her walking across the tarmac coming towards the uh, the FBO and uh, it was a, it was a wonderful experience. Jack was in a shell, it's called a tortoise shell, and we were trying to figure out how to get him on board the aircraft. I looked at Jack and I knew he was really, really scared. And he told me, he said, please, please don't drop me. And uh, I knew that after everything I'd gone through, six months and three major back surgeries and, and uh, weeks and weeks of radiation, the one thing I didn't know what was going around me, on around me, but I knew the one thing I did not want to get dropped on the tarmac because I wasn't going to go through all that again. So I was definitely scared. I took his head in my hands and I said, Jack, I promise I won't drop you. I promise I'll take care of you. And he looked at me and he goes, I trust you. I turned around and I called the Logan Fire Department at the airport and I asked them for lifting help. And uh, six big, huge men I know they, I remember them being big, burly guys, so I felt a lot more more comfortable. That's right, and they loaded them into the aircraft. And I was really happy that I was able to take care of that situation, put Jack into that aircraft safely, and make sure we didn't drop him. So after we became connected, I, I received his phone number and we started talking. And uh, finally, it got to the point where I was going to start my own air ambulance company. When I was able to start my company, uh, Jack became my CFO. I was truly grateful for what she did for me on the flight out and the, particularly the flight back because I was more aware of what was going on. So uh, when she said she was definitely going to start her own company, I, I, said to, I think I said to her, but I definitely said to myself, if there's anything I can do to help, uh, anything I can do to help you, I certainly will. Twelve years later, I'm still involved and I hope it continues forever.